if you've been paying attention to social media lately, everyone is talking about rest. It's become very, very, very trendy. But a lot of people don't actually know how to rest. Like, did you know that rest is not just you taking a nap, you laying down and doing nothing, you sleeping? There are many, many, many ways that you can rest, and I want to share those with you. Welcome or welcome back, beautiful people. My name is Alicia Renice, and I am so happy that you are here. On this channel, we have talked a lot about rest, a lot about hustle culture, grind culture, the American dream, black excellence, black girl magic, and how all these systems honestly exhaust us. It's exhausting. It's exhausting to be a black woman in America. It's exhausting just to live. You're not enough and too much at the same time. We are all exhausted. And so even though we've talked about it, talked about exhaustion and rest and how important rest is, I want to make sure that we talk about how to actually rest. Because when people think about resting, the first thing they think about is sleep, which makes sense. It's one of the best ways to rest. When you're sleeping, your body is at rest. Your mind can fix itself. It can repair itself. It can restore memories. Your body, your cells rejuvenate, right? You're able to recover and refresh yourself, right? But sleeping and napping are not the only ways to rest. Today, I want to talk about physical rest. Over the next few videos, I'll be talking about different ways to rest in depth and in detail. But today, I want to talk about physical rest. We know what it feels like to be tired. Your eyes are heavy and hot. You know, you feel irritable. You have brain fog. Your body might feel sore or just like heavy, right? We know when it's time to lay it down, to hang it up <laughs> and go to sleep, right? But there are other ways that we can rest our body. Now, the first thing I did was define the word rest, and this is what I found. Rest is ceasing work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. Again, ceasing work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength, right? And rest restores, nourishes, calms, right? And the first thing we think about sleep is sleep because we know that sleep does these things, right? Sleep restores, sleep refreshes if it's good sleep, right? But there are other ways to refresh and restore your body, your physical being. And I want to share those with you. So I want to remind you, rest is productive. The reason why I say this is because a lot of people feel guilt around rest because they feel like I need to be doing something. I need to be producing something. I can't just sit here and do nothing, right? But even when you're doing nothing, you're still doing something. I love that people are reframing the way that we say things because it's not true. You're never sitting and doing nothing. You're sitting and recovering. You're sitting and refreshing yourself. You're sitting in the presence of yourself. You're enjoying your own company, right? Your cells are regenerating. You're never at a standstill. You're never not doing something. Your body is always at work. And so to say that by resting, you know, to say that you feel guilty, I get it because it's this community, this country makes us feel guilty about rest. But to say that you're doing nothing when you're sitting still is a lie. Your body needs you to sit still sometimes. Constantly being in movement that's how you injure yourself. That's how you overwork yourself, right? That's how you tear things. That's how things come out of sockets. We need to rest. We need to rest. We need time to recuperate. And when we are recuperating, that is work too. That is using calories and energy. When you're sleeping, you're still burning calories. Did you know that? When you sleep, you burn calories because your body is doing stuff. You're never just at rest until we pass away. And so that means that there are things that we can do even while we are awake to aid in our rest and our recuperation and our refreshment. So the first thing I wanna offer is sleep. <laughs> sleep, of course, napping, napping. The quality of your sleep matters though, right? So for myself, I'm a very light sleeper. If I hear a noise, I'm gonna wake up. So I often put on white noise to drown out the noises so I can hear. I don't know if that's all the way healthy, but it helps me. It also helps me not to be so engaged with like things that are raising my blood pressure or things that are getting me excited before I lay down. I try not to consume super uh, caffeinated products, uh, chocolate. I don't really drink coffee, but things like that, right? So the quality of sleep matters. Get cozy. Put on your favorite jammies. Take a shower. Put on some lavender essential oils. Make it a thing. Make it a ritual. Make it a process you enjoy that winds you down. Sometimes I stretch, I pray, right? I, I give all my grievances and my frustrations and my uh, worries to God because I don't wanna go to bed worried about it. You know what I mean? Like there are certain things that you can do to improve the quality of your sleep. For napping, I set a timer now. <laughs> I've made the mistake of napping and not setting a timer and I wake up more exhausted than when I laid down, right? Because I'm in a deep, deep sleep. So now I set a timer. Okay, I'm gonna have an hour. Even if I don't fall asleep, I'm just gonna lay here because that counts too. I'm just gonna read or meditate or do something that requires me to do as little as possible. Another thing I wanna share with you is sitting still. Like I said, laying down, that counts. That is your body at rest. 
That is your body able to realign itself, readjust itself, and also to focus in on the places, to show you the places that maybe you have been too, you know, in a hurry to notice, oh, that feels weird. That's different. What's going on here? Because when we're constantly in movement, we are constantly distracted by what's going on around us that we never really check in with the body, right? So sometimes I do a body scan. I sit here, I scan from the top of my head, relaxing my muscles in my head, in my forehead, relaxing my jaw, my cheeks, my eyes, like letting them rest, going all the way down to my feet, checking in with my body and coming all the way back up. Not only does that help me to remain present, but that also helps me to be aware about what's going on in my body. So sitting still doing nothing is very helpful to rest physically. Another thing I want to offer is drinking water. (laughs) I know that sounds silly, but drinking water is rest to the body. It helps keep your body lubricated, moving, right? When I drink water first thing in the morning, I usually have to go to the bathroom, right? It's helping my body. It's aiding my body in expelling things from my body, right? Which is helping my body to rest. Because if it has a bunch of toxins or a bunch of heavy things in your body, your body can't rest. It's over there trying to fight the toxins in your body. Drinking water does a lot for the body and it helps your body to rest and to heal you and to take care of you better. So just aiding your body, giving it the food it needs, right? Not just the sleep, but the sunlight, the food, the vitamins. It aids in your body having more restful experience because it's not traumatized, trying to take sugar and you know just these random processed foods to try to heal your body. So you aiding your body with healthy things is also helping your body to rest because it's not working as hard. You're helping it work. You're helping it work easier. All right. The next thing I want to say, gentle movements of your body, walking, swimming, stretching. Some people like yoga, Pilates, like things that aren't so strenuous on the body, things that don't rip apart so hard. When you're exercising, pumping iron and stuff like that, the reason why you're gaining muscles is because there are micro tears in your muscles, right? And that's how you gain the muscle, right? But sometimes we need movement that is restorative. Sometimes we need movement that is kind and gentle to the body, a gentle stretch, right? Doing things that keep your body flexible but doesn't harm the body necessarily. It's not really hard and rough on the body. And I talked about this before, walking. Walking has been very helpful for me as far as exercising, but also like having a good mental health about myself, I'm being kind with myself and gentle with myself in a world that wants me to go at 100 all the time. And at one point in my life, I went 100 always. Like I was like, if I don't run, it doesn't count. If I'm not sweating, it doesn't count. I'm here to tell you the small movements, the gentle movements, they count. They matter and they all add up. They all add up. And often people who walk actually walk longer than people who run. Because running for a long time, even though it's good for the body at some level, at some point it's damaging and it's not sustainable, right? And not anti-run, but just do it gently sometimes. Take it easy sometimes because you want your body to last for a long time, not just a good time. You feel me? So gentle movement is also good for the body with resting. Meditation and breathing, right? Sitting still, observing. I also do a grounding practice where I take in everything that's happening with all my senses. So right now, I feel the cool air coming in from the window. I hear the birds chirping. I taste the bitterness in my mouth from the grapefruit I just ate. I smell the sausage my mother is making downstairs, right? These these things, being in the present moment, meditating, holding a scripture in mind or a mantra or a saying, meditating on that over and over again, sitting and just letting your mind wander. That also counts, that counts. So yeah, and breathing. Sometimes I forget to take a deep breath. Sometimes I don't even realize that I'm breathing shallowly until I'm like, huh, let me check in here. Again, check in with the body. Let me breathe. (sighs) Breathing heals the body. It oxygenates the blood, obviously. We need to breathe to survive. But also it calms us. When I am having panic attack-like symptoms, I take deep breaths. I ground myself. When I am getting frustrated or angry and I feel my blood pressure rising, I take a breath. When I am reveling in a moment and I want to savor this moment, moment, I take a deep breath. Breathing, something so small, something we have access to all the time, something we don't utilize all the time can be so beneficial to the body, so restful to the body. It regulates, right? It regulates our blood pressure. It regulates our heart rate, our emotions. There's something beautiful about breath and we have it with us always and we can utilize it better. 
I also want to talk about massages and rubs. First of all, I'm always for a good massage. I massage my own hands, my own feet, my own body when I can. There's something comforting about your own touch. We talked about this in the garden and how a lot of us are so disconnected from our bodies that hugging ourselves feels weird. Or I patted myself on the back the other day and I was like, this is strange. Why does this feel strange to me? Me touching my own self with love and massaging my own self with kindness, right? With nourishment, being like, I love you, body. Thank you, body. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for holding space for me. Thank you for being a, a container for my soul, a beautiful expression of my soul. Thank you. Thank you, body. We never really take time to do that. We're just like, oh, I got to go. got to do this. We're, we're always kind of like outside of ourselves, not really inside of ourselves. And being connected with ourselves, even physically in that way, massaging our own face, right? Taking time in the morning to notice the freckles or the moles or the blemishes on your face. That stuff is grounding too. That is restful practices too. So you can massage yourself or you can go get a massage too. That counts. <laughs> but just taking care of your body, like allowing the blood to flow, working out the kinks, cleaning the lymphatic system. There are so many benefits to massages. All right. Another thing I want to say is a hot bath. Just like laying in the bath. There's something about laying in a hot bath that feels really, really, really good. It feels luxurious. I put little Epsom salt in there and I just sit there and I read a book or I put on music and I'm just like, I feel luxurious. And even though I'm just in a bathtub, right, you couldn't tell me nothing I'm, that I'm not in a hot tub or a sauna, right? There's something relaxing and healing about taking a hot bath. My last suggestion is, a, is to be cozy, right? Is to be cozy, to put on a blanket and just love on yourself. Dress yourself in things that make you feel good. You walk taller when you feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like there's more confident. There's more pep in your step. You feel more energized when you're cozy or when you feel like, you're honoring yourself. You're honoring your temple. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily about how other people look at you. It's about how you look at yourself. Put on your favorite earrings or your glasses, right? These are physical ways that even though it, it's even though it's not necessarily affecting the body, it is. Because when you're confident, you're you're when you're confident, you you're boost your self-esteem, your immunity, like all this stuff. When you feel great, you feel great. When you look great, you feel great. So whatever way that looks like to you. Not by the European standards. We don't care nothing about that. How do you feel good in your own body, right? And I lied. I got one more. A spa day. A spa day. Kind of like massages, but taking time to really pamper yourself is relaxing sometimes. And sometimes it's also work, right? So if it's work, go get it done. Go get your nails done. Go get your hair done. Go get your hair cut. That's what I do. I get my hair cut by somebody else, right? Be pampered for some time. Rest. Rest right? So now that I've offered you these physical ideas that you can implement today, you can take a, you can take a breath, you can take a walk, right? You can stretch your body, you can move your body around, right? You can do a body scan. There's, these are ways to rest physically in the body. So I hope this is helpful. If it is, please let me know. And if you like this video, check out this video I did about why I even started this journey in the first place, right? I talk about how black women are exhausted, how you don't have to earn your rest, it's really important that you rest, that you take care of yourself, that you take, you're the only one, like you're the one that has to take care of yourself. All right. I see you. I love you. Rest. And I'll talk to you in the next video.